Hey guys, this is a very simple application built using Angular as the front end and GraphQL as the back end. Now, this is a to do app, and we are going to create a new item in here, and then we are going to assert whether the item has been added to the list or not. All right, very simple test case. Now, there are two ways you can do this. First one is the old school way, all right. The second one is, yeah, baby, it's a Cypress. Okay, so old school way is you visit that website, you click on that create new item button, a new input field would be added, you enter in those values and then there would be a button, you click on that click button and then you wait for the element to be added, to be rendered in the DOM, okay. That's what we have learned in all those legacy tools, okay? And uh, unfortunately, uh, despite of promoting the cy.intercept a lot, I've already created a video on it and on YouTube, there are so many cy.intercept videos. I have seen people are still following that old school way. They are adding timeout to the cy command, okay? There's another problem in this code, which is this should visible because when you say cy.contains, you know, it is anyhow checking for the visibility of that element. All right. So guys, yes, you can use this, but there are two major problems with this. Number one, you're going to slow down the overall execution time. And number two, there's still no guarantee that this element would be visible or rendered onto the screen after 10 seconds. Why? Because we got to understand the logic. These days we have separate client application and separate backend application. React Angular, with the help of these technologies, we create single page application, guys. Now, there are different components that gets rendered onto a single index.html page. Okay, now when are those components rendered? Anytime there's a change in the state. Now, how does that data change? You know, the data is being changed when we make an API call. That API call then fetches the data from the database and give it to the render method. Let's say if you're working on React and that methods then re-render that particular component in the DOM. Okay, yes, there are more concepts like virtual DOM and uh, real DOM, but I don't want to go into the detail, but guys, this is a part you have to understand. The way developers are implementing is they make an API call, that API call returns the data, all right, and then they feed that data to that respective component, okay? So your testing strategy has to align with that, all right? Great. So yes, this may work, may not work. So. Uh, this way we end up generating the flaky test case all right so you keep on extending then the time okay hey i know my api will definitely get resolved in 30 seconds oh 30 seconds are very precious guys time is everything all right so we are not going to follow this approach then the next approach is the cypress way we are going to say okay hey uh, i'm going to intercept the uh, api call that is being made okay now guys, what's so special about this video? If I've already created an intercept video, I've already shown that to you, then why I'm recreating that. Guys, this time I'm covering the GraphQL API call. I have already created a video on uh, how to make GraphQL API requests using CY.request. And in that video, first 12 minutes, I've talked about how can we build a very simple uh, GraphQL API application. Right now, in there, I have talked about some important concepts, um, which are, you can say, the building blocks of GraphQL API. Okay. For example, entity, I talked about input type, I talked about uh, resolver methods. Okay. So I also talked about what are those queries. So I strongly recommend you go and check that video out. All right now in here why graphql api interception is different from rest api because guys in graphql there is just one endpoint okay for your whole uh, application you also have just one http method which is post 
okay so for example i open this application all right uh, let us open the developers toolbar uh, let's go to the networks tab all right and let us create a new item and give it a name uh, test something uh, we click on create item and now guys we are going to make some graphql request the first request would be to post the data into the database so it is of type mutation anytime you make change to the database uh, that type of query is called as mutation when you are fetching the data from the database right that's called as query so the first one would be the mutation and the second one would be the query because we have fetched that uh, record and after that we have displayed it here onto the screen okay let's see that so I click on this GraphQL first one and in here guys you see uh, operation name create item mutation and this is the query so we have created this item uh, this is guys the URL you could see this one is your URL and this URL now next one is let us uh, look at this so this is home page query so in here and this is of type query right so we are just fetching the newly created item and displaying onto the screen uh, in this case also the URL is same like I mentioned there's just one endpoint in for your whole uh, application in GraphQL right now this is the problem and this is the challenge right because uh, for normal rest api at least the path section is different okay in the url you also have path and query so based on that you can say okay hey i want to intercept this request but now what are you going to do if you might have uh, seen this already the difference is in the body so this is uh, this operation name is create item uh, mutation and this is i guess uh, home page query right so the operation name is different so this is what we are going to make use of and going to write our test case all right so this is my url guys okay and we have the cy.visit so visiting the website all right so what are we doing we are intercepting um, that particular request so normally this is how you write you since you have to uh, provide the HTTP method by default it's get so you say post and then you provide the URL and in usual cases right you create an alias okay so you create an alias for uh, you know the create item and then you create an alias for the render item all right and then you uh, click on create item so okay it's simple right so you you have created create new item then you entered in the value and uh, then you are just saying that okay click on that button but then you wait for those requests to be completed and then you check for this particular item okay right so that's the correct way of doing it so once the request has been completed obviously the item should get rendered now i'm gonna check for that element all right it's it's that simple but the problem is the url is same okay so this is not the way we are going to work on this so we have to get rid of this and this in here all right and we have to use the third argument now i have already created one video on you know how to test your uh, progress bar okay by slowing down your network request so in there also i have used this third argument uh, which is uh, a function so we say request and we write this function okay all right so whatever code we have written this far okay this is going to intercept all the requests so i have to filter out my request okay now like i mentioned the operation name property in the body is different because that operation name is nothing it's the name of the resolver method and that has to be unique okay if request dot body okay dot and guys you have to pick this operation name query okay so you see if this value is equal to now when you are creating the item this is the value so this is the name of the resolver method you just copy that put it in here if that is the case right you just want to alias this request so you say uh, request dot and then you have this alias property and you set it to this create item okay like so and then you just want to let this request continue 
so you say continue that's it and you got to do the same now for the render GraphQL API request as well okay and uh, let us look at the operation so guys the operation name for this is home page query okay so we come in here we replace this with home page query and let us give it a different alias render item so like this all right so we are now intercepting both of those requests and we are ensuring that once both of those requests are completed then we are going to check for this element so we are not providing any hard-coded timing value okay so that's the power of cypress okay so let us change this skip to only and execute our test case all right we are all set all right let's wait for it i hope everything would work all right so yeah okay great so you could see we have intercepted that request so when we were posting it you could see okay we have done that request modified and same is the case with the render item we have modified it okay and then we are waiting for these two requests like so okay once this is done then we are asserting for this element okay and this is visible all right guys so always try to use the cy dot intercept rather than hard coding the time values okay and number two this is how you are going to work with uh, the interception of graphql requests all right so i hope you like this thanks for watching